Wow, Luxembourg, you actually survived for quite some time just being in the middle of this gangbang. I know how scary that can be. What better way to celebrate America's independence on July 5th, the day after, than just going ahead and making them a puppet again? Because why not? I mean, let's be real. The Western Hemisphere is horrible in Hearts of Iron 4. But we're gonna change things today, and that's what we're gonna ask ourselves. What if the New World was colonized by literally anyone else from the Old World? It's gonna be completely at random. Of course, that means that the UK, France, and Spain will be included, but there's a very high chance a pretty small place gets something over there. And yes, we are doing this for each and every nation in both South and North America. Even the Caribbean, I mean, even though that's not gonna give you shit. Now, obviously this is gonna take a lot longer to set up, so I'm not gonna show like the wheel and everything. I'll just check back in with you when I finish certain regions. Okay, so as for Southern South America, we've got a lot of interesting things here. Portugal's colonized Chile. Denmark has colonized Argentina, which I actually really like. Then we have Austria and Oman in Paraguay. And you know, when you think about it, there's probably a higher chance Oman actually got here than Austria. As you can see, Finland is the big winner with Brazil. They've got this nice white color over a very tropical country. Great contrast. We got the Dutch with Bolivia, Lithuania with Peru, which is definitely the oddest one so far. Uh, Siam got Ecuador, and uh, the Netherlands also got Colombia. Obviously during this time period, these are not independent nations, so I figured I'd just transfer them directly. Iran, Yugoslavia, and the Soviet Union got a little bit more stuff. So there are a lot of changes that happened in Central America and the Caribbean. I thought the only interesting thing though was the fact that India can't like release a puppet. Obviously, I don't know why I didn't know that. A puppet can't have their own puppet. That'd be cool though. I do love the fact that we had all these weird ass nations take things in South America, but when we get to the Big Bad Three in North America, it seemed somewhat believable. We got Sweden and Mexico. All right, that is a pretty odd combination, but I like it. Norway has Canada, although the colors didn't change because they were a British colony before. I don't know, maybe small bug. I've actually been meaning to do a video on this. I would love to see like some sort of alternative history mod with the Vikings in Vinland and them just like colonizing Canada. And finally, we have the biggest underdog of all, Ireland taking over the States, which for some reason kind of seems perfect. By the way, no, this is not an Irish FDR. I, I, well, I don't know. I mean, can alcoholism do that to you? But no, I'm using a little fashion mod just to make sure every leader's looking fabulous. So here's what the new Western Hemisphere is looking like. And I, I want to say this colonization seems somewhat realistic. I don't know. There doesn't seem to be anything too far-fetched. I am starting to notice that some of these portraits aren't even fashionable. I, I don't know. I think it looks hideous. Listen, if you need any tips, don't be afraid to ask because clearly I know what the fuck I'm doing. Japan is starting to kick off their little party in China, and luckily, I have a feeling this is gonna go pretty well for you this time, cause uh, you have a whole new power under your belt. They're definitely not ready for this beast. Uh, okay, I guess since Austria was just annexed by Hungary, I think Uruguay is independent. That's like the first independent nation in the new world. I also forgot to mention that the Dutch basically became a colonial powerhouse. I mean, they still, of course, have the Dutch East Indies, and now these three new places, they're kind of like the Weed Avengers. That was quick. All right, not used to this. Someone must have declared war. Is it Germany going after Czechoslovakia? Okay, that doesn't really explain. Ah, okay, wait, no, I'm still confused. So World War II starting up about a year early. That's not that crazy, but whatever Poland's doing, yeah, that that's odd. Are they about to join the Axis? Oh, no, that that's not gonna happen. And this is the reason why. Uh, Poland gets really triggered when you don't join their faction. For all the noobs out there that haven't played much Hearts of Iron 4, they're probably thinking, oh, the reason why Japan took out China so fast is because there were no warlords involved. But only the best Hoi 4 players in the world, like myself, know the real reason. Wow, and now Yugoslavia just joining the Axis for almost no reason. No questions asked, just joining in. Germany has finally declared war on the Dutch. I, I think they were a little scared at first. They don't know if they can handle the... Weed Avengers. Again, it, the, these are South American countries. I'm assuming they're producing some sort of drug out there. Ah, dang it, there is a civil war. I, I thought we were gonna avoid this completely. Either way, it's not gonna last long, and neither is Romania. But hey, of course, the final ally in Constantinople Europe is the Dutch. They're holding pretty strong. Now that's a thought right there. That's a thick thought. A thick trap thought. Again, it's always nice to see this nation pop up, just because it is kind of rare and hopefully they'll be able to help Italy out a little bit, because, yeah, this isn't looking good. All while Japan in the east is starting to look kind of terrifying. 
annexing Indochina. They're peaceful at the moment, but that won't last. Whew, I was getting a little worried. I, I thought we weren't gonna see anything in the Western Hemisphere, just like normal. Uh, but we are seeing some conflict with Peru now. Austria-Hungary just returned. We'll see which faction they join. If they could somehow just join the Polish team, That'd be amazing because they're looking pretty good. As we wait for that, Japan is just causing pure chaos in East Asia. Yeah, I think Hirohito's trying to take out every last warlord. Peru is actually doing way better than I expected, taking out Bolivia, and they should be safe with this kind of small territory here. Also, Siam joined this uh, Japanese faction. Oh, and I also forgot to say that communism will have a nice ally in Spain. I mean, that's probably for the best because if Franco was here, yeah, the fascists would be running away with this. No, the great colonizer Oman. What's happened to you? Well, your legacy will never be forgot in Paraguay. So Norway still looks the same. He's just chilling here with his democracy, but their new puppet Canada, not so much. They've gone to the dark side. Wow, Luxembourg, you actually survived for quite some time just being in the middle of this gangbang. I know how scary that can be. There we go. Okay, now we have a full-scale war in the east. Obviously, it doesn't really matter. Hirohito's about to just stomp all these warlords. Although purple low IQ Stalin has really made it clear that he's gonna do everything in his power to try to keep a lot of places alive. Seems to be working. As soon as I say that, nope, I, I take that all back. Wow, Japan has a lot of puppets. And right away, Hirohito's decided to go after the Dutch East Indies, also bringing them into a war with the Raj. The allies are not gonna make it here. I did not understand how the Peruvians were doing this well. Like, I've never seen this nation do anywhere close to this, uh, but then I forgot that, yeah, the Soviets are probably helping out quite a bit. All right, Treaty of Brazzers. France took a lot more stuff than I thought. That's kind of amazing, but Poland, on the other hand, yeah, they needed a lot more. Europe doesn't look that insane, to be honest. It's just ruled by fascists, communists, and monarchists at this point. All the democracies are dead. We also have this, which is pretty scary enough. I'm assuming Australia, yep, Australia went towards the axis, except for, what the hell? All right, that's interesting. Yeah, no, the Polish faction needed way more than this, and I thought they'd get it. I mean, they were involved in this great war for a while. You'd think they'd have more participation points. I've noticed that when the Iberians get bored, they tend to just go to war with each other. Is that just a World War II thing, or is that just history in general thing. I just noticed Saudi Arabia is still at war with some of those former Oman colonies. So the Saudis are at war with Paraguay and Costa Rica. Are we sure these places even know each other exist? This relatively small conflict is now gonna bring us a scenario that I never thought we'd see. The co-prosperity sphere is gonna attack the Axis. And the stranger thing is it's all gonna happen while the Soviets watch. I feel like it happens when there's only two factions left, but the communists are still looking pretty good. Portugal just joined the Polish faction. Also, I forgot to mention that Stalin's at war with the Polish faction, so that explains this. Wow, and the Japanese are just killing over here. I don't think the Germans had enough time to really rebuild these areas. There's no way. And Austria-Hungary is using a strategy straight out of the Italian playbook. They've decided to switch sides, at least compared to World War I. They've joined the Japanese, which is obviously a much better choice than joining Poland because they're about to die. Uh, but you guys probably are too. Fairly normal stuff here, even though it does seem like he took a little bit more territory than I expected. And he still got a puppet out of it. Oh no, no, no. Japan was doing so well. Yeah, if, if Mongolia calls in Big Daddy, which I, is that what they're doing right now? They haven't done it yet. It's about time. All right, I was starting to really regret the fact that all these Nordic countries got so many colonies. I forgot how peaceful they can be. The cool thing about this is not only is that Scandinavian conflict gonna be playing out, but we also have Brazil versus Mexico now. A very good rivalry on both ends. Wow, Hirohito is about to get so lucky. I, I mean, maybe maybe that's not even the case. I think it's just because Stalin knows he can't take on the co-prosperity sphere. Oh my God, Adolf is just, constantly committing suicide. I realize it's just realistic, but this is getting ridiculous. I don't know, maybe the AI doesn't realize the puppet situation? No, no, that can't be the case. Either way, the US just joined the co-prosperity sphere. Fucking Pokemon. Finland just puppeted Sweden, as well as they puppeted Haiti. I forgot to mention that was also a colony of the Swedish. So, does that mean Mexico just gets to go free? Oh yeah, well kind of. I mean, they are at war with all these nations now. Uh, but they should be pretty safe. 
they'll be fine. Things are looking really bad for the Axis. Not only is Japan invading Ethiopia, but all the way up in the British Isles, we have the US leading the charge for the Irish. The Americans are just flooding into the European theater. I guess they don't really have any other theater to worry about, but uh, yeah, that's helpful. And same goes for Japan in Africa. This is an odd combination. I have never seen the Japanese in this continent. I would like to mention as the Irish are sweeping across Europe, taking out powers left and right, they only have five divisions. They have five divisions and they are about to reap all the benefits. And there is the peace deal. I don't think we've ever seen a nation get so carried like this, but at the same time, that's kind of why I want to do this video. Well, Japan on the other hand was just taking everything. I don't know if they really puppeted all that much stuff. Also, is this, the, yep, that's, the Irish have control over India and I'm assuming Australia, yep, Australia as well. I guess our plan to recolonize the Western Hemisphere kind of worked to an extent. It was still boring and it was kind of gonna be boring no matter what, but uh, we did just see the greatest carry of all time and Ireland doesn't get very many good games. So it's always nice to see them have at least some success. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time. Big thanks to my Patreon supporters, Furry Cruise, Swiss Argo, KMT for China, Sister Fister, Jake Paul's My Daddy, Yeet God McNeckass, Daddy Sea Beans, Maxi G, Tyler, Matthew Rembish, Caitlin Liu, Sean Spillman, Jen's Love Disc, Bruce Vacation, Matthew E, William Bennett, King Solomon, Elijah Senpai, Kirby, Wyone, and Elfie C.